Cornering in Coventry now as we go speeding to Speedway. 28 days on and the screen sport cameras return to Brandon Stadium in Coventry for the continuation of the 1992 World Individual Speedway Championship. Since that occasion at Coventry, the Australians and New Zealanders have joined the chase for honours. And this afternoon here at Coventry, the Americans join the fray for a trip hopefully to Poland. Very tough one today, obviously only nine riders going through, so a bit of pressure on to get the points in early. Yeah, that's right. Uh, but, you know, I've been through this before and I know what I've got to do, so, you know, uh, that's what I'll be aiming at, making sure that I get through and scoring some points early on, and then hopefully if things are going well by the mid-meeting <coughs> mid, mid, mid stage, you can start to make a bit of a plan as to what you're going to do, maybe finish on the rostrum or something, but the main thing is to get some points in and uh, get safely through the next round. So let's go into heat number one and into the fray straight away is the current British champion Gary Havelock. He rides in red in gate number one. Andy Smith, the very brave rider from Coventry, he's in blue red, rides in gate number two. Rick Miller, who had his testimonial meeting here on screen sport uh, back in April, he rides in white, he's in gate three. Uh, Mark Thorpe from New Zealand, the very surprised man at the recent Commonwealth final at King's Lynn, he's in yellow and black, he's off of gate number four. 500 cc clutch starts no brakes on these machines up to about 60 miles an hour and it's three points for a win two for second one for third and this is heat number one of the 1992 overseas speedway final the bikes roar and the first one to show is gary havelock gary havelock leads in red coming around the exit down goes mark thorpe tried to come around the outside of andy smith let's take a look at that one in slow motion now the question is does smith go out or does Thorpe make a mistake and well I'll leave that answer to yours truly but uh, it did look as though Andy Smith went just a little bit wide and there we see Mark Thorpe going back to the pits on a stretcher which is not a nice sight to, sight to see and uh, with him is the legendary Barry Briggs of course four times world individual speedway champion so the restaging of heat number one with all four riders back into the fray referee this afternoon Neil Ringstrom from Sweden says nobody is to be punished and they're all back into the lineup. So, the repeat, Havelock Red 1, Smith Blue 2, Miller White 3, Thorpe Yellow and Black Gate 4, the restaging of heat number 1. Gary Havelock, who of course won that British Championship when he beat Martin Dugard for a run off the last time we were here. And then in the overseas, finished third at Kings Lynn, sorry, the Commonwealth finished third at Kings Lynn two weeks ago. So the restaging, Havelock yet again makes a terrain drop from gate number one and we've lost the rider in white Rick Miller with mechanical problems on the very first turn so Gary Havelock leads in red with some breathing space between himself and Andy Smith in second place Mark Thorpe third so Gary Havelock really has been like a man possessed so far this season especially in world championship circles first in the British final third in the Commonwealth and now looking pretty set for three points in this opening, opening race here at Coventry again. Have a lot lead, still from Andy Smith, tucked in behind him and Mark Thorpe, I'm sure. After that nasty looking fall on the first stage in this opening race, will be perhaps just content to get the one point out of this one and try and get his momentum back for later in the programme. So coming around the final two bands, oh, heat number one is going to be Gary Havelock without a question of a doubt, he's going to get three points in the opening race. Havelock wins. Second place is Andy Smith, and third place is Mark Thorpe. So a good win for the current British champion, and I'm sure that'll settle any pre-meeting nerves that he had. Three points already on the scoreboard, that's a nice position to be, especially winning heat number one. Heat number two, and in red is Shane Parker from Australia. Blue, gate two is Billy Hamill from the US of A. Simon Wig, who we heard from earlier in the programme, he rides in white, gate three, and Mike Freer, the current US national champion in gate number four in yellow and black. This is heat number two. Up go the tapes and into that brand they drive and the first one to show is Parker and coming around the outside is Mike Freer in yellow and black. Parker, Freer, Hamill and it's Freer who takes the drive around the outside. Shane Parker is in second place, Billy Hamill third. And Hamill comes underneath Parker with terrific skill on that third and fourth turn. So it is Mike Freer who leads. Billy Hamill second, third is Shane Parker and Simon Wig back in fourth position. Two laps goal of heat two. And Mike Freer still leads. 
Billy Hamill tucked in behind him, beginning to be just a little bit filled in. But Mike Pereira but took a very, very brave manoeuvre on that first and second turn, and although not in British Speedway at the moment, he uh, certainly knows his way around the Brandon Stadium. We're on the final lap of heat number two, and three are looking set to open his quest for a semi-final place with three points in heat number two. Around the final two bends, and coming up to take the win is Mike Furrier that gets there. Second place is Billy Hamill. In third place is Shane Parker. So a good win for Mike Furrier in yellow and black, and three points to him. Congratulations on that one. It is time to tell you that from this quarterfinal of the World Championship, there are nine places available to go through to the semi-final stages. So seven will be unlucky this afternoon. Seven riders, that is unlucky. Heat three, Mick Shearer, red. Sam Ermolenko, blue. Paul Thorpe White and Jason Lyons in yellow and black. Started Marshall calling them in. Calling Thorpe and Lyons just a bit closer to that starting tape. The green light goes on. And we're underway. Action roars into that first turn. Shearer, Ermolenko, Lyons. And just took that Jason Lyons drive. Oh, there wasn't much room for him there, but he done it. Jason Lyons has made it. Sam Ermolenko goes out wide and Shearer's through to second place. But the braveness of this young Australian, Jason Lyons, who has stepped up to Division One racing in 1992 with the Bellevue Aces, really kept that front and wound open as he started to come out of the second turn and went round Mitch Shearer and Sabah and Palenko. Terrific ride for number 12 on his back. It is Jason Lyons who will lead from Mitch Shearer in second place. Sudden Sam and Malenko relegated to third spot and we're now entering the final lap of heat number three. I'm sure all this to do is chase runners, no harm whatsoever, is Jason Lyons straightens up and comes up to take an early win. It flames that gets there. Second place is Mick Shearer. Third place coasting home is Sam Malenko. But a very, very brave, brave ride from number 12, Jason Lyons, as he gets the three points from heat number three. Two goes to Mick Shearer and one only to Sam Ermelenko. Heat number four, Marvin Cox comes out for his first ride in red, gate number one. Martin Dugard there in blue, a very brave young English rider, broke his collarbone in the Commonwealth final just 14 days ago, but back in the fray this afternoon. He's in blue, gate two, Ronnie Corey from America, gate three in white, and Calvin Tatum, the current overseas speedway champion at the moment in time, who of course, from English, he's back around this afternoon. He's in yellow and black on Geith. Tapes rise, the clutch is dropped, and the first one to show is Tatum and Corey. And Tatum goes round the pack on the first and second turn. So Calvin Tatum leads, Ronnie Corey second, Marvin Cox in third place with one lap on. But Calvin Tatum just about knows every inch of this Brandon circuit, having spent several seasons here racing for Coventry. Ronnie Curry in second place at the moment. Cox still third, the two laps gone. And Martin Dugard, who has got that broken collarbone at this moment, trailing in fourth position. So Calvin Tatum, who has been regarded as England's greatest hope for several seasons, and uh, still an exceptional gator on his day. And, uh, well, oh, just look at Ronnie Curry make a terrible mistake on the final lap. And that is going to cost the young American dearly. That gives Cox and Dugard points. But coming up, and oh, well, what's happened is Tatum that gets the win. Second place is Marvin Cox. And in third position is Martin Dugard. So Ronnie Curry there, an unforced error, or did he overslide or what? Let's take another look at that incident. As Ronnie Curry goes back to the pits. I'm sure he's going to be very disappointed with what happened there in heat number four. And he just slides gracefully down to the track, but it did look as though he lost just a little bit of concentration as he went into the, the funnel lap of heat number five. Heat number five, all the riders have now had one outing here at Brandon. Calvin Tatum can be out for two on the top. The track has been regraded. He's in red. Gary Havelock is in blue. Shane Parker is in white. And Pawthorne is in yellow and black. Pawthorne failed to score first tonight, so he's desperate for points. So. Watch for him in gate four. Calvin Tatum, a winner, first time out. And have a lock there off one and two, respectively. And it's Tatum who's just got the drop. And just look at Paul Thorpe come round and join him as he got the speed down the back straight. Thorpe and Tatum together, but 
Tatum has just got it. Tatum leads. And Havelock comes underneath Forthorpe and well against him to third place. Now Shane Parker coming into the fray. Also comes underneath Forthorpe. So nearly from first position to fourth, Forthorpe in one lap of speedway. But it's Calvin Tatum that leads. Second place, Gary Havelock. Third place is Shane Parker. And Calvin Tatum with number 13 on his back is looking pretty set for six points after two heats. And that's got to be good news for his quest for a semi-final position. Rides, of course, for Mario Stad in the Swedish Elite League, which we should be seeing later on in our series here on Screen Sport in August and September. But it's coming around looking pretty sure of three more points here in heat number five. It's Tatum that comes up to take the win. Second place is Gary Havelock, and a long, long way back to third place, which is Shane Parker from Australia. So, Calvin Tatum is unbeaten at the moment on six points. Two points to Gary Havelock, which puts him on five, and just a solid point to Shane Parker. That's the result of heat five. Heat number six, Martin Dugard rise in red, but Shira blue, Andy Smith white, and Simon Wig in the yellow black wig. No points from his first outing, and Dugard won, and Shira and Smith both among the points already. So heat number six quite vital for red and yellow and black. The starting marshal calling them in. Smith and Wig, the last two to settle in the outside gates. So eight for the green light to go on. It does. The tapes rise. The nose bikes roar into that first turn. And it's Dugard that's got there. Martin Dugard has got the drop. Down the back straight. He just leads from Mitch Shearer and from Simon Wigg. Wigg in second place on the outside, and oh, goes out terribly wide, and through comes Shearer, through comes Andy Smith, and Wigg is left for dead. So Martin Dugard, who desperately needed points, has now got just the daylight he requires in heat number six. From Mitch Shearer in second place, Mighty Mitch, who now rides for Swindon in Division One after a close season transfer from Reading, and Andy Smith is back in third place. Martin Dugard races for Oxford in the Sunbright League with one more lap to go in heat number six. Dugard still leads from Shearer second, from Smith third, and Dugard now will have four points after two outings. And with somebody who's racing with a broken collarbone, that's got to be good news for his calls for a semi final play. So Dugard wins with ease, heat number six. Second place is Mick Shearer, and third place is Andy Smith. So congratulations to Martin Dugard. I'm sure he's going to be a lot happier in life after getting those three points for winning. Heat number six. Heat number seven, Samar Malenko comes into gate number one in red. Marvin Cox there in blue, he goes into gate number two. Billy Hamill is in white gate three, and Rick Miller is in yellow and black gate number four. So three Americans and one known Englishman in heat number seven. Nutty's drop goes bikes drive into that first turn and Ermelenko, oh, and down goes the rider in white, Billy Hamill. Let's take another look and it's certainly the rider in blue there, Cox, who goes out just a little bit wide and takes Billy Hamill's wheels away from him. So we'll have to wait and see what happens and what the referee says on that one. The referee says all four back for the restart of heat number seven, Ermelenko, Cox, Hamill and Miller in that order across the gate as they drop the clutch and go to that first turn, and it's Ermelenko who's got there. Miller and Cox is there, and Hamill is left for dead at the moment. So Ermelenko leads from Rick Miller in second place. Third is Marvin Cox, but Sam Ermelenko really was speeding away quite considerably as those tapes rose on heat number seven, the restart of heat seven. So Ermelenko looking pretty set for three points in the restart of this race. Sudden Sam Malenko races for Wolverhampton. Still Rick Miller in second place. Marvin Cox third. Uh, Ermelenko took Wolverhampton to that British League title in 1991. Wins Heat number seven. Heat number eight, Mark Thorpe rides in red. Mike Freer rides in blue. Jason Lyons is in white. And Ronnie Corrie is in yellow and black. So the riders just resting the clutch as they make one or two last preparations before they get pulled into the start by the starting marshal. Heat number eight, after which all the racers will have had two outings. Mark Thorpe for New Zealand. 
Mike Freer from America, Jason Lyons from Australia, Ronnie Corra from America, and Cosmopolitan look to heat number eight here at Brandon Stadium for the overseas speedway final. Pictures is always coming from the hot shot cameras and screens for it's a takes ride on this particular race. And oh, it's very tight indeed. And it seemed to me that three riders tangled and all went down. And poor old Mark Thought's machine is revving its guts out. Pull the cutout, stun it up as he does indeed. And the engine comes to a blinding halt. Let's see what happens from the camera behind the start. It looks to me as though yellow goes to white, white goes to blue, and red just takes a lot out. And the only one that missed the carnage was yellow and black Ronnie Carr at the end of the day. We'll have to see what the referee's decision is on the outcome of the double race. So there we see the review hammock colour of Mike Freer, not racing in England or anywhere on the club at the moment, just staying back in the United States of America. The referee's decision is all four runners back on the restart. Max Watt rides in red, Mike Freer blue, Jason Lyons in white, and Ronnie Corrie in yellow black. Up go the tapes, and into that turn they roar, and look at, look at Jason Lyons, he's got the drop. Lyons leads from Thorpe in second place. Jason Lyons really has been running exceptionally well for Bellevue, but his progression into this one, and the way that he's took it by storm, as the rider in yellow black, Ronnie Corrie then comes through the pack to take second place from Mark Thorpe. Mark Thorpe going out terribly wide on that one, but it's still Jason Lyons that leads. Ronnie Corrie in second place. Mike Freer now comes through the third. But Jason Lyons really doing exceptionally well here at Brandon Stadium this afternoon. And this would be his second win of the afternoon to join Calvin Tatum unbeaten after two outings. Jason Lyons from Australia leads. One more lap to go at heat number eight. Still from Ronnie Corrie in second place. Mike Freer back in third, and Jason Lyons will be certainly very happy with proceedings at the moment. Comes up to take the flag and take the win. It's Lyons that gets there. Second place to Ronnie Corey, and third place to Mike Freer. And what a start to this overseas final for number 12 there, Jason Lyons. Two wins to his name, and currently at top of the pack, along with England's Calvin Tatum. So it's time to look at the old scoreboard, and in pole position, Jason Lyons from Australia, Calvin Tatum from England, both on six points. Gary Havelock on five from England. Martin Doog on England. Sam Malenko and Mike Freer from America and Mitch Shearer from New Zealand, all on four points. And Andy Smith and Marvin Cox, both on three points. So there we are. That's the conclusion after two rides each. Join us for more Speedway from Coventry after the break. So welcome back to Brandon Stadium. Clive Fisher for Screen Sport. Welcoming the viewers along from all over Europe to this overseas Speedway final. The 12th staging of the Overseas Speedway final, and this Brandon circuit, 335 metres long. And as I say, they get up to speeds of about 60 to 70 miles an hour on the straights. No brakes on these machines, 500cc, clutch start, six gearing as we move on to heat number nine. Summer Wig rise in red, gate one, Ronnie Corey, blue, gate two, Gary Havelock, white, gate three, and Sam Ermalenko, yellow and black, gate four. This, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, is heat number nine. Into that bend, they drive, and who's got it? Ronnie Carr has got the drop on Gary Havelock on Simon Wig, and it is just just a little Malenko coming around the outside of Wig. It's, it's all action, all changing. This one is still Havelock comes from the back over Ronnie Corey, and also Malenko over Wig. The action was fast and furious there, but it's Havelock that leads from Ronnie Corey in second place. Sam Malenko third, Simon Wig still in fourth position. So Gary Havelock really riding like a man possessed. And it's got to be said, if he can hold on to this, surely he's booked a passage as early as the interval stage for a semi-final position. Ronnie Corrie now coming under pressure from Sam Ermelenko. Ermelenko in yellow, Corrie in blue. Havelock in white, in front. Ermelenko going out wide, cutting back on Ronnie Corrie. Has he got the drop? Corrie in blue, just watch these two. It's in the latter stages of heat number nine. Still Ermelenko coming around the outside of Ronnie Corey, has he got him this time? And Ermelenko comes down to take second place, literally on the line from Ronnie Corey. Speedway of the highest order. What a race heat number nine turned out to be. Gary Havelock comes from the back to win, but just look at the manoeuvres on the last two bends by sudden Sam Ermelenko and his fellow teammate at Wolverhampton, Ronnie Corey. And it's a race to the line, but it's just Ermelenko that gets the drop as they cross that checkered flag. 
number 10, Jason Lyons, the other unbeaten rider at the interval at the second outing. He rides in red. Shane Parker, his fellow Australian here in the overseas finals in blue. Marvin Cox White and Andy Smith is in yellow and black. So two Australians take on two Englishmen in heat number 10. At the halfway stage after this one of the overseas speedway final here from Coventry's Brandon Stadium. There goes the clutch, dropped on heat number 10 in the first one to show as we look down it's the rider in red, which is Jason Lyons. Jason Lyons leads from Shane Parker and Andy Smith. Andy Smith goes round the outside of Jason Lyons in superb style. Well, Andy Smith rides, of course, for Coventry now in the British League, but that was some breathtaking manoeuvre by him. Tragedy for Andy Smith last year when he broke his neck in a, a crash accident at Bradford. And he's back in action with Coventry this season. That really was a breathtaking manoeuvre from him. So Andy Smith leads in yellow and black from Jason Lyons. Now coming under pressure from Shane Parker. So Jason Lyons has got his work cut out to keep his foot on. Just look at Parker, take him as well. So Shane Parker comes through to second place. And poor old Jason Lyons has had his work cut out here in heat number 10. White, Marvy Cox trying also to come into the fray, but all eyes are on the man in front. That's Andy Smith and the battle for the minor placings. A great roar, I'm sure, from the Coventry faithful here, and we'll salute Andy Smith as he gets a win. But in second place on the line, it's Shane Parker who gets the two points. And Jason Lyons, the early leader, who has to be content with just one point. But congratulations are from the back win for Andy Smith in a fabulous race, heat number 10. So heat number 11, Mike Freer rides in red. Four Thorpe rides in blue. Rick Miller from America rides in, in white in gate three. And Martin Dugard is in yellow and black. So Dugard at the moment doing very nicely indeed on four points after two outings. And uh, well, as I say, riding with that broken collarbone, we just, uh, he perhaps needs that extra bit of luck from an English rider's point of view to get through to the semi-finals. So Freer, Thorpe, Miller, Dugard in that order from one to four. This is heat number 11. First one to show is Rick Miller in white. He's got the edge from yellow and black Martin Dugard. So Rick Miller leads, Dugard in second place. Trying to get that front wheel down onto the track, which is so easy to lift those bikes and lose control. Rick Miller leads, rise for Coventry, of course, in the Sunbright League. And Maria Stan in Sweden. And Rick Miller, who desperately liked to get through to the semi finals of the World Championship, made that world final appearance back in 1990 in Bradford's Otsal Stadium and had quite a good of a count of himself. Recently married an English girl and we're expecting the, the first child very shortly, so good luck to you, Rick. But on the speedway bike, he's still fast and furious. And heat number 11 looks in full control of this one. Martin Dugar will have things to say, I'm sure, but that one as he tries to come up the inside. Better knows he's there. Puts the line, the wheels in line and goes round the front of two bends. Coming up to take the win, it's gonna be Rick Miller who gets there. Dugar in second place and Mike Ferreira from the USA back in third position. So, Rick Miller putting his knowledge of the Brandon circuit to good use in heat number 11. He gets the three points. Two points to Martin Dugard and one to Mike Freer. The result of heat number 11. So we move on to heat number 12. The one before the interval stage here at Brandon this afternoon for the overseas speedway final. Calvin Tatum unbeaten on six points. He's in red. Mark Thorpe, blue. Mick Shearer in white. And Billy Hamill is in yellow and black. This is heat number 12. But he's dropped the bike's roar into that first turn of the one. He's got the drop. It's Mitch Shearer. Mitch Shearer from New Zealand leads. And coming through to join him in yellow and black is Billy Hamill. Calvin Tatum in third at the moment. But it is Mitch Shearer, Mitch Shearer mighty Mitch Shearer, of course, from New Zealand, who's had several world final appearances. The Sunbright kid, as he's known, leads from Billy Hamill, who's trying desperately hard to get on level terms with him. Mark Thorpe and Calvin Tatum having their own little battle for third and fourth place respectively, Thorpe just with the edge. Mitch Shearer now coming under pressure from Billy Hamill. Hamill cuts up the inside of Shearer. Has he got the drop? Shearer, is he gonna keep his composure? Hamill on the inside, Shearer on the outside. Mighty Mitch, and of course, used to race for Coventry back in the late 70s. He makes a record this afternoon along with Calvin Tatum. Their eighth appearance in an overseas speedway final, breaking the record of Chris Morton. But it's all about a race to the line now, and it's just going to be Mitch Shearer who gets there. Billy Hamill has to be content with second place. A fabulous scrap between those two in heat number 12. Mitch Shearer gets the three points. Two to Billy Hamill. 
Mark Thorpe gets one and none for Calvin Tatum in fourth position. So that alters the old scoreboard, but let's take another look, breathtaking look at the closing stages of heat number 12. Mick Shearer in white, Billy Hamill in yellow and black. Now just look at Hamill in yellow and black, cut up the inside of Mick Shearer, gets his line, wheels in line just that little bit sooner than Mitch, and at that position is in front of Mitch Shearer, but Mitch is not finished. He comes back, leans on the upper, the opponent, comes round, winds up to the open. Tough all round this one, everybody giving 100% today. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a tough track, and when you get um, all top guys on it, like this on the starting line, you never know what's going to happen in that first turn, and the main thing is today for me is to qualify, but at the moment I still have a chance of getting on top of that rostrum, so the next couple of races are going to be important. So all the riders now have three outings at the interval stage here at Coventry, and Gary Havelock heads the pack on eight points. Jason Lyons and Mitch Shearer are both on seven, drop two points. Martin Dugard, Sam Ermolenko, who just heard from Calvin Tatum and Andy Smith, they're locked together on six points. And Rick Miller, Mike Ferreira and Billy Hamill, they're on five points. They're the leaders at this moment in time after heat number 12 here at Coventry's Brandon Stadium. So join us for more action from this 1992 Overseas Speedway final after the break. Welcome back to Coventry's Brandon Stadium for more speedway from the 1992 World Individual Speedway Championship. This is the overseas final where only nine places are available for progression to the semi-final stages of this World Championship. Seven riders at the end of this meeting will be disappointed. Uh, for the nine lucky ones it will be into the hat in Denmark shortly for the draw for the two semi-finals which take place at Bradford's Odsal Stadium on the 9th of August and one week later the 15th it goes to Austria find an Oystad to be precise. So let's get underway then with heat number 13, which is Billy Hamill riding red. Jason Lyons currently joined second on seven points. Martin Dugard on six in white. And Gary Havelock, the current leader, on eight points. He's in yellow black. This is heat number 13. Up go the bikes and it roars into action. And the first one to show is Billy Hamill in red. Hamill leads. Jason Lyons and Gary Havelock there together. And look at Havelock around the outside of Billy Hamill. So Havelock now takes the lead. Billy Hamill in second place. Back in third is Jason Lyons, and fourth is Martin Dugard. So still Havelock leads, a superb manoeuvre by him to take him to the front over Billy Hamill. Billy Hamill, of course, made his day. Oh, he just look at Hamill go up in the air, and down he comes, completely lifts in the air. And the two behind him, which was Jason Lyons and Martin Dugard, lead their bikes. And let's take another look in slow-mo. Up oh, goes the wheel. Oh, terrible accident, that is. Congratulations to Jason Lyons and to Martin Dugard for laying their machines down at very, very short notice. But Billy Hamill on the track, we see there Martin Dugard, who's also got that broken collarbone racing with it. And that's certainly not going to do that any good whatsoever. Jason Lyons, who's having a few words with Kelly Moran there. And that's the sad sight, is Billy Hamill is carted away on the stretcher. One of the most likeable characters in the speedway circuit at the moment. And what a lovely smile he's got on his face. Let's hope that's soon back again. And the accident is going to cause too much discomfort to him. We'll try and get the news on the pits as soon as we can on the injuries too, Billy. But in the meantime, it's three riders only for the restaging of heat number 13. Up go the tapes on this one. Gary Havelock on the outside of Martin Dugard. Dugard now got the drop on Gary Havelock. Dugard in white leads. Havelock second. Jason Lyons back in third position. Jason Lyons has certainly been in the wars this afternoon with falls. And we could only hold our hats off to him. But it's Dugard who says thank you very much for the restart and he's back into the fray with what could be three welcome points for his calls for progression to the semi-finals. Dugard leads in white, Havelock second in yellow and black, Lyons in third. I'm sure he'll be just coasting round and waiting for his final outing to make sure of a semi-final place, but looking good. Dugard still leads. This will put him on to nine points and surely that will be enough to put him through to the semi-finals. Gary Havelock, he's on eight, this will give him ten, and these two surely now look for England's calls to be going through to that draw in Denmark shortly. Coming up to take the win, and it's going to be Oxford's Martin Dugard that gets there. Second place goes to Gary Havelock, in third place is Jason Lyons. So Martin Dugard comes back with a win, which surely now books his passage to one of those semi-finals with three points. Heat number 14, Andy Smith rides in red. He goes into gate number one. Calvin Tatum also on six points with Smith. He's in gate two in blue. Mike Freer in white on five points, gate three. And Sam Ermolenko 
on six points as well. So everybody in this race, if they can get the win, they probably would be through to the semi-finals. But it's a funny old game. You can't be sure of nothing in Speedway. The Stoney Marshal just getting a little bit anxious with these riders to come in to take their positions. And the action in this one, I can assure you, is going to be fast and furious. Heat number 40. The first one to show as they go into that tent. Uh, first turn is Calvin Tatum in blue. He leads. On the inside is Andy Smith. But Tatum has got the drop from Andy Smith. Calvin Tatum leads in blue. Andy Smith in second place behind him. Third place at this moment is Sam Romilenko and Mike Freer in fourth position. So Freer beginning just to tail off in this overseas speedway final. But Tatum, after two good rides and a tough one in his third, looks good for three more points in his fourth outing. Andy Smith still back in second place, and Sam Romilenko trying to make up ground on him. Calvin Tatum round these two bends at Brandon Stadium. Smith and Romilenko having their own little battle as we enter the final lap. Tatum down the back straight for the final time. Now Shaw, surely a three more points. Coming up to take the flag. It's Tatum that gets there. Second place for Andy Smith and Sam Romilenko back in third place. So Calvin Tatum now goes on to nine points after four outings, and that, I would think, has booked his passage through to the semis. Andy Smith gets the two points. He moves on to eight, and one point for Sam Romilenko in third place. In 15, Ronnie Corey rides in red. Rick Miller in blue. Mitch Shearer is in white, and Shane Parker in yellow and black. So there we see Mitch Shearer on seven points. Rick Miller and Shane Parker need the points to get in. Just a little bit more breathing space between them and the rest of the riders. But Mick Shearer is doing exceptionally well. Of course, he used to ride here at Brandon for Coventry in the late 70s. And such a king competitor in World Championship. As they speed from the start. And the first one to show is the rider in red, Ronnie Corrie. Corrie and Shearer. Mick Shearer now takes the inside line on Ronnie Corrie and speeds to the front. Mick Shearer takes the lead. Ronnie Corrie in second place. Shane Parker third. In that order. And what a great manoeuvre by Mighty Mitch who just comes up gracefully up the inside of Ronnie Corey and literally caught him with his trousers down. So Mitch Shearer in white leads from Ronnie Corey in second place. Still Shane Parker back in third place but coming under pressure from Rick Miller. Still Shearer from Corey, from Parker, from Miller in that order. Now Miller getting closer on Shane Parker's back wheel. Has he got anything left? Can he grab that solitary point? Those points could be so vital at the end of the day between satisfaction and disappointment. Then the back straight for the final time. It's going to be Mitch Shearer. Sure, sure, he's going to keep his nose in front and do New Zealand's call the world of good here at Brandon. It's Shearer that gets the win. Second place is Ronnie Corey. And third place goes to Shane Parker and no points from Rick Miller. That's the result of Heat 15. And Mitch Shearer now goes on to double figures. And those 10 points assure us Mitch Shearer of the semi-final place, either at Bradford's Otto Stadium or Werner Neustadt in Austria in the middle of August. So heat 16, after which all of the competitors will have four rides here at Brandon Stadium. Paul Thorpe rides in red, he goes in gate number one, failing to score, Simon Wig in blue, both failing to score, both English riders looking to go out of the World Championship. Mark Thorpe from New Zealand on two points, and Marvin Cox from England on three, and these riders have got to do something, especially Cox, the others would have to say perhaps it could be a little bit too late for them. But Marvin Cox needs to win this one to give any hope of progression in the World Championship. Fourth up the last one to centre of the course. He'd done so well in that World Final last year, finishing in sixth place in Ulevi Stadium on 10 points. As the tapes rise on heat number 16, and it is Thorpe who's got the drop. Paul Thorpe leads. Blue is Wig. Paul Thorpe leads from Simon Wig in second place. Mark Thorpe is there as well with him in white. And Marvin Cox back in yellow and black in fourth position. So it's Paul Thorpe and Simon Wig who just got a slight chance of perhaps getting one of those final qualifying places. Oh, and down goes the rider in white. Mark Thorpe disappears in the dust here at Brandon this afternoon. The race is stopped by the meeting referee, Miles Ringstrom from Sweden. Let's see if... Uh, for a Mark Thorpe, who's also been in the wars this afternoon. 
here at Coventry. Let's take another look. He just slides gracefully to the, the shale here and goes out to the fence and doesn't look to be any discomfort until the bike decides to run over him. So let's see Mark going back with Barry Briggs, the legendary Barry Briggs, of course. Four world championships to his name, 57, 58, and 64 and 66. So three riders only, Mark Thorpe excluded from the restart at heat number 16. And Paul Thorpe in red, Simon Wig in blue. Those two were in first and second place respectively when the race was stopped. And now this, of course, gives Marvin Ch uh, Cox another chance. Another bite of the apple is to take the score. Up heat number 16. Up they go, the engines roar into that first turn, and it is Thorpe who's got there. Cox coming around the outside of Simon Wig, but it's Thorpe who's got the drop. Cox in second place, Wig third. So Paul Thorpe leads in red. Now look at Cox coming around the outside of him. Marvin Cox, sponsored by Good old Auto Vice, has just got the drop on Thorpe. Thorpe comes back, very close between these two, the red and yellow and black. And now Cox just with the breathing space between him and Paul Thorpe. And Simon Wig is going to be a casualty here at Brandon this afternoon and drop out of the World Championship. That's a certainty. And also Paul Thorpe will join him if he drops points in this race. But Cox is going to give himself just a little chance. And it all depends on the riders in the last four outings here at Coventry this afternoon to see what happens. So Cox leads. Still Thorpe in second place. Wig in third. And Cox is going to... Hold on to the skin of his teeth to a chance. Currently on three points, this will give him six, and with one more ride, he can still do it. But it's Cox who wins. Second place goes to Paul Thorpe, and Simon Wig has to be content with third place, and he's out of the World Championship for 1992. So congratulations to Marvin Cox, who's back in the fray. So the scoreboard, after all riders have now had four outings, Gary Havelock and Mitch Shearer are joint leaders on 10 points. Two on nine, Martin Dugard and Calvin Tatum. Two on eight, Jason Lovins and Andy Smith. Sam Romlenko on seven, and Marvin Cox on six. And how tight those bunch are grouped together. So, join us from Coventry's Brandon Stadium for the conclusion of the overseas final after the break. back to Coventry's Brandon Stadium where heat number 17 is the one which will decide the champion of the overseas title holder for 1992. Still not a question still to be answered with the places to go forward to the semi-finals but this is the one which will decide the champion on the day. Gary Havelock rides in red, he's on currently on 10 points. Mike Freer in blue, he's on 5. Marvin Cox is on 6, he's in white. But Mick Shearer in gate 4 in yellow and black also on 10 points. So Havelock in red, Shearer in yellow and black are the two riders to watch out for. Started the marshal calling them in, the track's been regraded. We now wait with bated breath to see which one of these two riders pops out of that start. They're already through to the semis, but they would dearly like to get that big trophy in his sheer and have a lock, have a lock. He's just got the drop at the moment with Mike Freer in second place. A Shearer coming around the outside of Mike Freer. So have a lock leads. Mitch Shearer second, Mike Freer third. Cox back in fourth position at the moment, they're making up ground on for here. And it's Gary Havelock who took the British Championship here at Brandon 28 days ago, who's looking on course to add the overseas title to his name. And as at long last, Gary Havelock going to write his own chapter in British Speedway. So long, but under the shadows of the likes of Calvin Tatum, but now he's just beginning to put his name to the front of British Speedway. Have a lot lead still. Cops come through to third place. But one more lap to go, heat number 17, which is going to see the man with number one on his back. And that's the position he's going to be here at Coventry this afternoon. His Cops comes underneath here. But our eyes are on the first man who's going to take the flag and take the title of overseas champion of 1992. It's Gary Havelock that wins. Second place is Mick Shearer. But just look at the delight on this rider's face. And who can blame him? 18-point tally only last weekend in the semi-finals of the Pairs Championship for England. And one week on, he comes to Coventry's Brandon Stadium and lifts the 1992 Overseas Speedway Championship. Mitch Shearer shakes his hand. He has to be content with second place for how well he's rode as well. And third place on that occasion was Marvin Cox. But all eyes are on these two who've done exceptionally well. Mitch Shearer and the man punching here with delight, and who can blame him? Gary Havelock, who rides for Bradford in the Sunbright League. 
four weeks on from taking that second successive British Championship in its the overseas title of 1992. All the riders coming out and the officials to congratulate him. He's the champion of the overseas title holder for 1992. So after the Lord Mayor's show, there's quite one or two things to be settled here at Brandon. That's who's going forward to the semi-finals. Heat 18, Paul Block, Red, Andy Smith, Blue, Bobby Ock coming in for reserve out and replacing Billy Hamill, who we've heard has damaged his wrist and shoulder. We keep our fingers crossed for you, Billy. It's not too serious, but it is Ronnie Curry that goes around the back. And Ronnie Curry leads, who desperately needs points. Ronnie Curry leads. Second place is Andy Smith. Third is Paul Thorpe. Ronnie Curry, who well, hasn't really had a lot of success in the big ones, the world finals that he's actually got to. Last season, he started well in the Ulliver Stadium, but finished up on six points and finished 11th. Spot. No, he leads heat number 18, and would this be enough just to take him through? The calculators are going to have to come out. Ronnie Corey leads heat number 18 from in second place. Andy Smith. This would do Corey's chances a world of good of getting through. Corey, a great competitor wherever he races for Wolverhampton, and what, along with Sam Romanenko, a big reason they took that Division One title last season. But just look at Andy Smith trying to come up on. Race to the line, it's just Ronnie Curry who holds on. Second place is Andy Smith, but he wasn't going to be outdone by Ronnie Curry. Made him fight all the way to the line. Curry gets the three points. Two points to Andy Smith, and one point to Paul Thorpe finishing in third position. So, as that, and is that enough to put Curry through? We'll have to wait and see what happens in the final two races. But I'm sure Ronnie Curry is pleased with life at this moment in time. Coming round to the applause of the crowd, as is Andy Smith, who uh, is fair to say coming back from that nasty injury in 1991 and is doing marvellous with the Coventry Bees this season. Ronnie Curry, who's had uh, that little mishap in his first evening when he fell off, which uh, we'll have to find out from him later on exactly what happened, but uh, he's the winner of Peter Brady. Heat number 19, Rick Miller rides in red, another rider desperately needing points. Jason Lyons on eight points in blue, Calvin Tatum on nine in white, Simon Wing already out of things he's in yellow black on one point so it's rick miller who really needs the points here jason lyons and calvin tatum just to pick up a couple of points or a solitary point will be enough to put them through to the semi-finals bradford's also stadium on august the 9th for the first semi von neustadt in austria on the 15th of august for the second and poland is the world final on the 29th so that's all taking place in august this is heat number 19 here in June the 14th, as a bike swore from the start, let's see who's got the drop, and it is a rider in blue, Jason Lyons, Jason Lyons with his nose in front, and coming up underneath him is Rick Miller, Rick Miller trying to get through, Jason Lyons leads though, White also there, Calvin Tatum, but it's Rick Miller, oh, Jason Lyons lifts and through comes Rick Miller, Rick Miller gets first place from a mistake by Jason Lyons, Calvin Tatum trying to come through on Jason Lyons, and Lyons really brave to hold on to that second place, Calvin Tatum now taking the outside line, but Rick Miller with breathing space between him and Jason Lyons, and after shedding a chain, which is what he's done in his first outing in heat number one, Rick Miller coming back with a bang, and gonna finish this overseas being a hurt, just let Tatum come through on Jason Lyons to take second place. Will he be able to hold on? We're on the last lap now of heat number 19. Tatum in second place, behind Rick Miller. Miller on five points, this will mean he will end this overseas final on eight points, and will it be enough? He comes up to take the win, it's Rick Miller that does it, and gets the win. Second place to Calvin Tatum, and Jason Lyons has to be content with just one point. So Rick Miller wins and gets the three points. Congratulations to him, and I'm sure he's going to be pleased with life at the moment. Two points to Calvin Tatum, coming from the back over Jason Lyons, and poor old Jason Lyons, who, well, has had a bit of a battering here at Brandon this afternoon. He finishes on one point, and I'm sure he'll be pleased with life because that puts him through to the semi-final. Rick Miller says, I've just done enough. I'm going to squeeze through by the skin of my teeth. And I'm sure he'll be pleased with life at the end of this afternoon's proceeding. So the final race, heat number 20. Shane Parker rides in red. Martin Dugard rides in blue. Sam Romilenko in white on seven points. And Mark Thorpe in yellow and black. 
This is the final programme line. We've got to wait to see if we need any extra races for lower right, lower positions and reserves to go forward to those semi-final stages. If the take tries and they go into that first turn, Martin Dugard leads. Sam Malenko comes down the outside of him. And Shane Parker and Israel Malenko who drives down the back straight and takes the lead from Shane Parker. Shane Parker in second place. Third place in yellow and black is Mark Thorpe and Martin Dugard probably saying I've done enough this afternoon to assure my place and I'm not going to take any further risks. But it's Samuel Malenko currently on 7.2. Uh, well, these three will put him in the double figures and I'm sure that's just psychological for him. Make sure he's got through to the good semi-finals. Still in second place is Shane Parker and if he can stay in this position that will mean he will go into a runoff for the reserve position along with Marvin Cox. So just one rerun to have or one runoff shall I say for the reserve position but it's all same plain sailing to know who goes through now to the semi-finals. Samuel Maneko coming up to take the win in heat 20 and it's Samuel Maneko gets there. Second place is Shane Parker and in third place is Mark Thorpe. So Samuel Malenko ends proceedings here this afternoon with three points. Two points go to Shane Parker and one point to Mark Thorpe. So we now know the cut for the semi-final stages from Brandon Stadium. We know the four qualifiers, the nine qualifiers who go on, and we know the seven riders who will have to live to fight another day. Although with injuries, anything can happen this morning. Commiserations to poor old Billy Hamill, who we've heard is broken a wrist and damaged his shoulder. We wish you a speedy return to the track, Billy. But it's Samuel Malenko who ends up proceeding to those three points in heat number 20. So Gary Havelock is the 1992 Overseas Speedway champion. He wraps up proceedings here this afternoon on 13 points. But before that, we should go into the runoff for the reserve position to go forward to the semi-finals. Parker in red, cuts in white, takes rise on this runoff for just the reserve spot. Parker red, Cox in white. And it's Parker the leads at the moment. Cox coming up the inside of him. Cox <laughs> drives to the front. Nothing given on that third and fourth turn as Cox comes through. One lap gone, Marvin Cox leads. Parker in second place. And with the injury situation in the world of Speedway at the moment, it's probably worth noting that this reserve could be used and go forward and just look what happened to Tony Ricardson in 1991. Came in at reserve for the semi-final, then went on to finish second in the Ulevi Stadium for Jano Peterson of Denmark. So Marvin Cox might have a further say in the World Championship if it goes his way and might just fall out through injury. We're on the final lap of the runoff. Marvin Cox surely set now to be the reserve from this overseas speedway final. Coming around the final two bends of this runoff, and it's Marvin Cox who comes up to take the win. Cox gets a reserve spot from Brandon this afternoon and Shane Parker has to live to race another day but he's done Australia proud this afternoon. So let's take a look then at the complete another scoreboard from this overseas speedway final as those two riders shake hands down the bank straight. We know that Gary Havelock is the 1992 speedway champion, uh, overseas speedway champion on 13 points. Second place goes to Mick Shearer from New Zealand on 12. Calvin Tatum third on 11. They're followed by Sam Malenko on 10, Andy Smith on 9, Martin Dugard on 9, and Jason Lyons, how well he's rode this afternoon, picking himself up off the track on several occasions, also on 9 points. That's 7 of the qualifiers to go through. The other two that go forward... are Rick Miller on 8, and Ronnie Corey also on 8 points. Marvin Cox will go through as meeting reserves. So on behalf of Tommy Randers and Transmission and TV and Media, this is Clive Fisher as always for Screen Sport, saying goodbye from Coventry.